Hi, to this session we're going to cover the TBM Council or ATUM version 3.02 and how it maps to CSDM version 3.0. A little bit about TBM Council or ATUM. The TBM Council is a vendor agnostic organization, uh, yet it does have some background in Aptio. So it's something to keep in mind. Aptio donated a lot of their thinking in the, establishing this TBM Council, but it is largely driven by the financial modeling and things that you want to do from a financial management of IT. So some of the differences and similarities between CSDM and ATEM, if you think about CSDM as a common model across our platform to understand digital products and services and how they're managed throughout their life cycle. TBM ATOM was really focused on that service model to understand finances in IT. How is that attributed to the business use of IT? So that was really the key coverage and driver. The use, of course, of CSDM is to establish what those digital products and services are and uh, how they actually work across the platform. And TBM Court Council and, and the ATOM model, what we have is the primary use for IT financial service management, understanding where the finances are and how to attach your general ledger to the things that you do in IT and how to bubble that up to business. The origins of CSDM are relatively new in that they we came about in the 2018 timeframe as a collaboration between ServiceNow product units and eventually was used by customers directly. The TBM ATOM was largely a AppTO framework that became probably bigger than AppTO and was uh, donated or created as a, an agnostic framework. Uh, the, the, the caveat there is that a lot of other vendors don't play within the TM, TBM council, uh, but we see, a, a, given the adoption, a, a hard drive from customers to adopt the framework, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So we wanted to talk a little about what TBM Council taxonomy looks like. And what you see on the left and the right, these are the models that they provide, the standard way of looking at these models. Uh, now these are industry and vendor agnostic, of course, uh, but the idea here is that the bottom part where you have cost pools, you, you identify those cost pools from where you spend your money and how you uh, basically get, get billed by your vendors and how things, how money basically flows to your vendors and to different pockets like internal, external labor. And then you, you basically move that money up the ladder and you identify what IT towers that money goes to and what products and services. And then it kind of bifurcates into both a business unit and a capability perspective. On the right-hand side, you'll see a bit more detail in how that money basically flows uh, from that external general ledger all the way through the cost pools up to the various paths up to business units and capabilities. Now, now, the thing to keep in mind is that a lot of organizations, when they do spend money in, on things, it goes into a general ledger bucket. And this is a bit of a reverse engineering of how money is spent back into, um, from, from, a, from a financial, pure financial point of view, to IT and back into the business point of view. So it is a bit of a, a challenge to do this in practice, but there is a framework for it. And uh, the thing that I think got a lot of executives excited about this is finally being able to have some visibility on where money is spent within IT. Now, how this maps to what we do in, I in CSDM is uh, as follows. And so the first thing that's really obvious from the top down is looking at the business unit and how that maps to the foundation's domain in CSDM. So that's almost a one-for-one -one mapping there. We also have a very good, strong mapping on the business capability viewpoint too. So as a common point of view, this is a, a good starting point for the mapping. When you look at the shared services at this level, uh, the next level down, which is business view, you have a mapping to the business service over on the consume cell side of CSTM. So that pretty, maps, pretty much maps pretty well. And they don't, of course, get into the offerings uh, or, or a hierarchy of services, so to speak, but they do have uh, support for those services. The next area is the service delivery. And now this is interesting because we have the delivery, which is an ongoing consumption of technology. If you think about it that way, these are standard services and those map largely to those technical services down below that underpin many of those business services. Now there's another path we don't really account for in CSDM, which is the projects and investments. And this is 
labor that's changing things. And that's something we don't have a direct mapping for. Now, the interesting thing is the IT towers largely map to the CIs and CI classes that we have for infrastructure down below. There's some IT towers that we don't necessarily cover down here, obviously, like labor. But this is something to keep in mind, especially for cost of support, uh, aligning to those towers and how we basically set up those technical services and how those align to the various infrastructure that is being managed as well. So that's where we make the connection between sort of the, um, the delivery services as well as the IT towers uh, down below. The cost pools, those cost pools generally come from the general ledger as it's shown in the TBM forum diagram. Where what, what's interesting for us is that we have the product models and the co contracts that cover those products that you use from vendors. Again, it's not every cost pool like labor, but it is a good start. And I think there's a more pragmatic approach to how we rolled cost up using this information on a very mature CSDM rollout versus trying to uh, use the cost, cost information from a general ledger. So just something to keep in mind, uh, a, a mature CSDM, you won't need to take information from a GL uh, and apply it in this way. But the good thing is we do have a lot of the entities that map. Uh, we just don't have everything on CSDM, such as projects and investments, which would come from a PPM or agile type solution where you understand how many people are working on things. Thank you very much for your time on the TBM model mapping to CSDM. Hope the, hopefully this was of value.